Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek News. I'm going to be looking at Colors of Kasane by Harado Origuchi. This is a card game for three to four players where you are trying to put together fabrics okay, by using these colored cards. And you're going to be doing it in very particular ways as you draft cards from the table. You have available to you in the entire half hour game 12 cards. That's it. That's all you're going to get. And you have to make combinations out of those that will score you points. How do you do it? Here's a sample layout for Colors of Kasane for four players, where at the start of a round, you lay out a four by four display of cards. You have a score track here with everyone being keeping track of their score with a button, at least in the original version of the game. And you have scoring combinations that you are trying to achieve with the cards in your hand in order to get points. And in case you can't read them because uh, the distance from the camera, you are trying to get sets of odd numbers or even numbers. You're trying to get cards in ascending order or descending order from one to five or from five to nine, with gaps or without. You're trying to get cards add up to 10, pairs, triples, four of a kind, or particular card combinations, three, eight, and nine, four, five, seven, one, two, six. How do you get those cards? Well, you are going to draft them. In order, each player is going to draft a card and then the next player goes, next player goes, and you go around the table. You get a card, you put it in your hand. You can keep the hand hidden, of course, although everyone saw what you took, so you can decide how you want to play on that. As you get more cards, you just stack them on top of what you already have. Okay? So when you get a scoring combination, such as this, 9, 8, 6, in descending order, with three cards is worth three points. I can choose after I pick up a card to score. I put those cards down on my scoring card. I mark this with a marble. I get three points, move my button up the track and no one else can score this. Actually, I can't score it either. This, once a combination is taken, it's gone for the remainder of the game. Okay. Now, even though these have been played, this six is still considered kind of a phantom limb, if you want. It's a phantom card in my hand. And I can use it in the future to score at other times. For example, on the next turn, assuming these cards are still out, which they won't be, we'll ignore that for the moment. If I pick up a four, I can consider this six as being underneath the four. Now I got a six and a four. Those cards add up to 10. So what I do is I just take my four, put it on top. Those two cards are a 10. Two cards add up to 10, one point. Bing. Okay. Now this four is considered in my hand. And the four is kind of between each of the cards. If my hand were this, for example, I could score a combination and consider the four at the bottom here, or a combination of the four at the bottom here, or four at the bottom here. It's interesting because you got multiple possibilities for where that card can come in. Now, one complicating factor. Sometimes you're gonna take something that won't let you score. That's gonna happen. Sometimes you don't wanna take something or it'll mess up what you already have collected in your hand. Because if you have tons of stuff in your hand, uh, let's say I had this for example, I could choose to score these two cards that add up to 10 but on the future turn, I'm gonna to have to draft something else. I can't pass on drafting and now use this six to score a six, eight, nine. Hmm, okay, complicating factors. An additional complication, if you draft one of these cards, you get one point immediately, but it goes on top of your pile and now you cannot use that card in future hands. Hmm, tricky complicated to do. Go back here to our original layout. We have a layout of 16 cards in four by four rows. After each player has drafted three cards, uh, you might have something like this. You throw the rest of those cards away. You lay out a new hand of four by four cards and pass the first player marker to the player on your left and that player goes first. So you'll have four rounds each drafting three cards from an array. In the final round, you have to mix up all the discards with 
what remains of the deck and put those out there so you'll see all the cards. With a three player game, you're gonna have three columns of five cards each and you draft four cards a turn. So each time you play, you're still getting only 12 cards. And you're gonna end up with some number of cards over here on your display, maybe with some points mixed in there. Okay. And that's gonna be it for the round. Anything left in your hand at the end of the game is worthless. Okay, you didn't actually use it in your display. And then based on what you have here, if you have eight or more cards, you get a point bonus based on how many colors you've used. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You look at the chart here and you determine how many points of bonus you get. If you use five colors, you get no bonus at all. It's this kind of average score. But if you get one or two, you get a lot. Eight or nine, you get a lot. So you're trying to shoot for that color bonus as well. Finally, if you use all 12 cards, you get a bonus of two points. A little bit rich get richer, it seems, because if you're already laying out all your cards, you should be scoring with them. But of course, you've got all these low value ones versus high value. Are you going to be able to get six even numbers in a row to get those eight points? If you do, you may have to delay, take these one tokens, uh, score something else to get it out of the way and leave those numbers again at the top, those even numbers. Ooh, if only I could pick up all these things. I have tons of even numbers. That's where all these, but will the even numbers be there when I draft? Do you wanna push your luck? Do you wanna score now for what you have or do you wanna hope something good will come up in the future? That always depends on turn order. Are you gonna be first next round? It's a good chance you're gonna get an even number then. What happens after that though? You'll have to wait and see. So there's an overview of Colors of Kasane. And as I mentioned, it's a very tight game in that you're getting only three or four cards a turn. You're trying to collect them all together in your hand. You cannot change the order. If you score the point cards, which of course give you guaranteed points, kind of give you an out from drafting something you don't want, but it covers up what you already have and what you can use again. You wanna reuse those cards as many times as possible to score multiple times for each thing. But can you do it? It depends on what other people are drafting. If they see what you're trying to get, oh, you know, it takes experience to really see what, what's there. I played uh, some three player games. Uh, I then taught it to new people, four people, and I just ran away with the first game because I could see the combinations that were coming for me that they didn't. Second game, not so good. They, uh, they knew what they were doing then. So you need that one game experience to, to figure out how you're gonna draft and and know when to push it, when to score more. Colors of Kasane.